All right, then, on to the energy sector now. Off-grid solar solutions provider Delight has uh, launched a new solar home system. Now, the company is targeting people who live off the power grid and across the entire continent that's a market of millions now the company says that these products will enable locals to not only light up their homes but also charge their phones watch digital tv channels on solar powered tv sets uh, the company plans to spread its wings beyond east africa despite having a ton of sunshine many african countries still rely mainly on hydroelectric power for their day-to-day -day needs uh, solar energy penetration remains fairly small, dismal though would be a more appropriate description. Uh, Kenya though is diversifying its energy sources to include ge more geothermal generation capacity and a lot more wind as well. So let's dig deeper into the uh, solar, the home market rather, for solar power solutions. Ned Tozen is the CEO and the founder of D-Light is with me in studio right now. Thank you for your time. Rama, thank you for having me. Um, so historically, I mean, I know of D-Light as a, a provider of PV panels, uh, lighting solutions for the home, batteries, that sort of thing. So why branch out into electronics? So we've really started the company with solar lighting, with the idea to get people off kerosene onto sustainable solar energy that can provide light. But really what we've been hearing from our customers is that they want more. And light is really just a first step on that energy access ladder. Mm -hmm. So increasingly over time, we've been building more and more holistic energy solutions that include solar home systems that run radio, mobile phone charging, and really every household I would visit here and ask, what would you like next? Mm -hmm. The very first thing people would say is TV. Mm -hmm. So now we've provided a solar home system coupled with an extremely efficient TV bundled in that set to enable families to have you know, a really great household solution, energy solution, I mean, even if they don't have a grid connection. It, it does sound like it places a lot of emphasis though on energy efficiency, because on one hand, you've got the pretty high current load of your typical household electronics, your, your microwaves, yeah. your freezers, your fridges and so on and so forth. But solar systems haven't really gotten to that point yet where they can provide the current needed to power all of that. Right. So TV is really a next step for us because you can now generate really efficient TVs. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of interesting developments with refrigeration and other devices. So over time, there's going to be more and more uh, developments with efficiency that's yeah. going to allow more appliances. And at the same time, the cost of PV and solar is going down. Mm -hmm. The cost of energy storage is going down. So we think over the next five years, it's going to be possible for these households to have a similar, just like that of someone who has a grid connection. Right. So let's let's move down the chain, right? Mm -hmm. if, if you're already doing electronics at the moment, at some point, though, you've got to be thinking about getting into mini grids as well, don't you? So for us, we're very focused on building a household brand for solar. And we think mini grids play an important role in the overall energy ecosystem. But D-Light really is going to play in the distributed household rooftop solar space. And mini grids really require village level solutions and often require sort of an anchor tenant of, you know, a customer that can run mills and then they can power households that are around that mm -hmm. hub. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas we're really looking at rural communities that have a little bit more distributed households where the mini grid economics don't make as much sense. So basically like say a gated estate, 40 households, someone who wants you know a solar panel on every single roof, that makes sense for your business. But mini grids with the associated legal risks and the running costs just don't quite make sense at this point. It's Yeah, it's that and it's also the density of the community. So when you have a high density of the community, the mini grid economics makes sense. Mm -hmm. But as the households get more and more far apart from each other, having a distributed solution like what D-Light provides makes a lot of sense. Uh, let's talk about credit. Um, can you, of course, impose rate caps in yeah. mid-September last year? Um, and access to finance. Every single time we talk about solar energy solutions, yeah. access to finance is a huge, huge issue. Has this affected your operations? For us, it hasn't because we, right now, are raising capital from Europe, US. We actually just closed about $40 million of financing last year, specifically for our expansion in Africa. Uh, over time, though, it's going to be critical for us to unlock the consumer finance capital from local banks. Mm -hmm. uh, but commercial banks in this sector are still not willing to really lend money for the consumer financing required for these distributed solar solutions. Mm -hmm. I think that's still a few years out. So for now, at least, we're, we're not affected by some of the local uh, regulation changes that are happening here uh, because we're relying on foreign capital. Uh, just one quick question on that. Is it that they're not funding it because they don't understand the business or they're not funding it because they look at the risk and say, I'm, pretty, I'm not comfortable with this? The feedback I've always heard is that really it's just too early stage for them. Right now, there's about there's a couple million people in Kenya that are benefiting from these distributed solar solutions, but it's only really been a couple of years. Mm -hmm. I think they want to see that five-year kind of track record, and yeah. then I do think that capital will unlock. They're looking at the space seriously. 
seriously, but it's just a little early in the industry's development. All right, we'll leave it there for the time being. Ned Tozen, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. All right, we're taking a short break here on Global Business. Here's what's coming up next.